Senior Captain uh, Roy uh, Beam is a fire origin and cause investigator with the fire department. He began his career in fire service in 1991 as a firefighter for the Eagle Fire Department. He also uh, worked with the wildland uh, or worked as a wildland firefighter with the U.S. Forest Service, was a firefighter with the North Ada County Fire and Rescue. And then when North Ada County and um, the Boise Fire uh, Department joined forces in uh, 2010, he became an employee of the uh, city of Boise. So I want to thank uh, in advance Roy for um, his service and all of the people who serve on the Boise Fire Department and all of the other entities I just mentioned uh, for, for their service and for them keeping us safe. And I want to thank Roy in advance for being here this morning to share his time and his expertise uh, with us. And take it away, Captain Roy. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, Madison, it's nice to hear one of the voices in my radio in person. So. <laughs> I um, My main point here is to talk about seniors and uh, how you guys can reach out to them. And this, these are just lessons you can use in your conversations with them. But it also works for all groups. And my key point is basically check your smoke alarm and make sure that they're serviced and ready to go. Because that's really what we're all about is preventing that fatality disaster. And seniors are, as we move through the slides here, um, I only included around three to 4,000 slides for you guys. <laughs> the, um, generally looking at things, but this is the uh, presentation that we put together with the National Fire Protection Association and the Centers, uh, Centers for Disease Control. And it will see. What does when senior citizens get up from that age, they stop moving as fast. And they're not maintaining their equipment as well. And we have programs that allow people to um, get those taken care of. We have a, uh, our Boise Fire Union has a community assistance fund that reaches out and provides like handyman services. We also give away free smoke alarms from our apparatus. We all, all our apparatus have smoke alarms on them. So if you have uh, customers that need smoke alarms, all you have to do is reach out to us through our business line and we'll make sure that they get taken care of. The nice thing about smoke alarms nowadays is instead of having you change your battery out every uh, six months or so, they come with a 10 year built-in battery. So you don't have to worry about it for 10 years. And it does ease maintenance, especially for the seniors, because we try to encourage them to stay off the ladders at the top of the stairwell, because that helps prevent finding them at the bottom of the stairwell entangled in the ladder. So we've seen lots of interesting things. And then as we move on, the next slide would be encourage them if they do smoke. We prefer that they don't smoke with oxygen in their nose at the same time. <laughs> it does lead to interesting uh, burns on the floor, other things like that. And if you do note that, that may be something you, know, you could reach out to us and we could send someone over to talk to them about better methodologies uh, and what to do, but it may require more advanced assistance, but we were basically there to help. Uh, go ahead and move to the next one. It talks about space heaters. And space heaters are used a lot with the senior community just because as you get older, your body tricks you into thinking that you need to uh, require more heat to be comfortable. Um, some of your customers, you may notice, you walk into the house and they're comfortable at 80 degrees. And in my experience, 
We're in full turnouts inside of the house, 80 degrees. Is a neat weight loss program for us. <laughs> we um, get through the day. And the key component, we move to the next slide, is you're essentially, you want to have, when you look at your space heaters, you have three feet, or if you're using a metric system, a meter, of uh, distance away from everybody. And then make sure that they're modern um, appliances. I've seen some. Uh, space heaters that are still working from the 1950s. They're very impressive, except when you tip them over, they continue to work. Uh, more modern UL listed or underwriters laboratories, those um, heaters have an automatic shut off when they get tipped over. So you can test it if you want. If you tip it over and it still is running, then it's probably an older unit. And if you tip it over and it, it turns off, then it's probably safe and you can put it back up. Um, and then we move on to the kitchen safety. Uh, we have a fire about 18 hours apart on average. Uh, most of our fires, at least 20% of them, are kitchen related. Uh, with the seniors, typically the last fire I had this morning, three o'clock was the apple pie that had been baking for about 12 hours. <laughs> um, and it wasn't the lady had dementia or anything. She, what she had was uh, family members calling and distracted her and she'd just completely forgotten that the pie was in there. And then the smoke alarm worked and she could figure out why there was smoke in her house. And then uh, 14 of my friends came to her house and helped her determine that um, she had an overdone apple pie. But these are common issues that we have. And you can talk to your customers and you know, walk them through the safety measures of being kitchen safe, keeping the handles away from the edges, teach them like, the method is to remind them that if they have grandchildren or small children coming in, they don't want the small children reaching up and grabbing the handle. Engage them in that type of method is very effective in empowering them to do a better job. So we'll move to the next slide with smoke alarms, which is again the, our main push on our education. If you call us and someone needs smoke alarms, we'll make sure that they get them. The nice thing about our community assistance fund is it's a fundraiser that we raise money for and pay for free smoke alarms to give out to the community. And we'll also pay for any handyman service if they require it to install the smoke alarm so they don't have to get up on the ladder. And um, we will give them techniques on how to test the alarms. They don't have to climb up on the ladder. They can simply hit it with a hair dryer or use a broom handle and reach up there and push the button. That's actually a very good uh, physical skill to test their ability to maneuver. Uh, but the hair dryer is basically the easiest way to do it. And you hit it with a hair dryer, providing it's an uh, ionization detector, it'll go off. The basic View on smoke alarms is there's two types of smoke detectors out there, technologies that are commonly used in the home. One is called ionization detector, and that's uh, for if you have friends that come over and play with gasoline in your living room, that's the type of detector that you want to have. That detector is very good for picking up steam, cooking oils, um, things like that. And then the other end of the spectrum of the test or smoke alarm is called photoelectric. And think of it like a laser beam. And when smoke enters the chamber, the, the smoke alarm will go off. And the, that detector is very good if you have friends that come over and smoke and then hide their cigarettes in your couch. So that's what you're looking for in, in that regard. So you go to the next slide, you'll see that this is our contact information. 
and you guys are all welcome to use these PowerPoint presentations if you need to. But this is really the typical point is just contact us and we'll make sure that they get taken care of. So moving on there, we talk about escaping from your fire, having a meeting place. Ideally, you want to have a meeting place in front of your home. That way, when we show up with our big red toolbox on wheels, you can have a good view of the three stooges as they jump off the apparatus and come in and help you out with your, your issue. In community centers, if we move to the next slide, having them be aware of how and when to get out. Obviously, if the sprinkler is activated in their room, they're going to be self-motivated to leave in a hurry anyways, because uh, sprinkler water from the fire system is typically cold. Uh, we don't pre-warm the, the water like it is in the shower. And we do that on purpose because we're cheap. Um, having them know where to go and meet their friends is actually a very common point, and it's a good activity for seniors to do just so they can get up and move around. Physical activity is actually one of the best things to do for senior citizens is to keep them moving, um, keep them active in the neighborhood, and go from there. And then knowing our emergency numbers. So if we look at the next slide, we have 911. Dispatchers are very good at uh, extrapolating what's going on, but reminding the person that 911 is a great number to call if you have problems. And eventually the right people will be contacted and you can get help with. And then the next slide is planning your escape around your capabilities. A lot of seniors may be concerned that I'm in a wheelchair, how am I going to escape from this house? Or if I'm in a, a community, the best thing is if they are not physically on fire, that they can just stay in their compartment and stay there and we will be coming to get them. We specialize in all sorts of transport of people in wheelchair up and down stairs. We do it all the time. And we have lots of tools to get them out. By staying in their compartment, if they can't get out, they're perfectly safe, especially if their building has a sprinkler system until we get there to uh, remove them into a safer area outside. The reason why is the compartment with a door closed will keep your smoke out from like someone had a fire in a hallway in a planter, that smoke came out of the planter, activated the smoke alarm. The person in the wheelchair came to the door, saw there was smoke in the hallway, closed the door and called 911 notified our crews that they were trapped in their room. The fire was actually very small, but due to the fact that they called 911, they were one of our priorities to come in there and get them out. And what we did is we had one crew take the burning plant, which was used as a cigarette tray for some reason. Plastic plants aren't ideal for cigarette trays. <laughs> we prefer metal plants, so but that's just something you guys can bring up on your next art planning session. Um, but we removed the plant and then we removed the patient and she had a great time riding on the shoulders of four truck operators. And then as we move on, always be prepared, know your exits from all your buildings, even when you're visiting your clients, always have a place to get out. Uh, in my experience, I've seen ambulances uh, become combat ready equipment where the patient uh, became hyper aggressive and basically knowing how to get out was our most important thing. And that could be important to you guys too as you interview some people that are suffering from mental illnesses and may not be taking their medication on the proper uh, intervals. Then as we move to the final next slide here, re exercise regularly, encourage them to um, move around, get up, step on a chair, lift your legs. There's all a full gamut of exercising. And if you really want to challenge them, 
have them practice the next slide, which is stop, drop, and roll. And we've taught this from preschool on up. This is an excellent um, maneuver to remove the air from your um, fire that's around you. If you're cooking and you spill something hot on you, or you catch on fire by snuffing it out that way. But the best way is not is to avoid this entirely and use safe tactics to not catch on fire, such as not smoking with oxygen. And that's our most common uh, issue there. So we'll go on to the next slide. <clears throat> this is a guide from our National Institute on Aging. So if you have questions or looking for resources, these have excellent uh, points on exercise and improvement on senior activities. Next slide talks about unintentional falls. So you come into a house and you see lots of throw rugs. Tripping hazards are our biggest problem. Why we get called out a lot to our seniors is because they trip and fell. And as they get older, you have more diseases like osteoporosis, hopefully I said that correctly, which you're basically making their bones more brittle. And you just want to encourage them to make a safe environment. So looking up, get rid of the throw rugs and making it lit. We give out night lights to seniors to help them um, light their hallways. So when they use the restroom at night, they have a good visibility. The next slide talks about take your time. Encourage them to take their time walking to and from other explain to them that they're retired. They don't need to run around like they were when they were working three different jobs or raising children. The children are hopefully outside the house now and uh, moved on. If not, tell them to change the locks. And then the next slide talks about get out of your chairs slowly. Encourage them to Make sure they have their balance. We're a big um, hydrostatic body. And when we stand up, all that blood rushes to our legs. And if we stand up quickly and rush around, they may end up getting dizzy and falling down. And then finally, the other slide here is clear your way. Goes back to my comments about throw rugs. And then the next slide, see an eye specialist, core vision, our community action fund, uh, community assistance fund, excuse me, has helped uh, a couple seniors with uh, getting classes. So we encourage people to do that. Uh, make sure that if you spill any liquids, the next slide talks about um, having a non-stick surface in your shower, helping them obtain those devices, handles in those things. Our handyman program can help them uh, get those too if they need assistance with that. And that is again funded through our community assistance program. And then stairways, our next slide is, should be well lit from both the top and the bottom. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm one slide ahead of you. So go ahead, one more slide. And handrails. And if they need handrails installed, again, that's where our handyman program comes in and we'll get them anchored. Or you can just call 911 and say, hey, I want these um, handles installed correctly. And we'll politely do that when we get back to the truck. We'll They'll grumble, they call me and complain that they had to uh, fix someone's stairwell. <laughs> and the final slide I have is for COVID-19. Uh, you guys are probably all health experts on that. The one thing I always encourage people to is refer to the CDC website on their information and then to make sure that they're using an M95 mask, 
and make sure it's fitting properly across their nose and that they get a new mask on a regular occasion. But that's where I'll leave you guys. Feel free to show off what you know about your fall and fire safety now. If you do have any questions or concerns, I'm always readily available to be contacted by email or phone. I'm happy to assist you guys in any method or mission that you may have, especially if it's fire prevention related. Questions? So Roy, this is this is Mary Millette. Um, one question I have is, first off, thank you so much. I mean, these, you know, these are such key reminders of things that we should all do, regardless of what our, you know, what our age is, um, you know, especially when I look at, you know, like the escape plan or, you know, how do we contact, uh, you know, family members um, and then just, you know, basic things like the, you know, the mats and the throw rugs and um, the, the, um, Heaters. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called because now I'm in a. I'm. I use fans rather than heaters <laughs> at right. that point in my life. But anyway, thank you so much for all this information. It really it's, it's great information. My question is um, around um, our climate here, right? In just the dryness and whatnot, right? So we do things to protect the inside of our house, uh, but what are some things that we can do to protect the exterior? Um, you know, as well, there have been some situations recently, I know, like last fall, right here in the area where I live, a fire came really, really close. So what tips and suggestions do you have for uh, maintenance around the exterior of our home? The easiest answer for that is to have your offspring show up and clean up around your house. That's what slave labor is for. <laughs> what we're looking for is to get all those light flashy fuels cut back and removed away from your house so when embers and that's what's carrying your fire is embers will be caught in the wind carried up and they'll land on things uh, that are light flashy fuels so if you have a pine tree next to your house underneath that pine tree is some beautiful fuel for fire for an ember to land in smaller and then build up into flames. So if that fire builds up, you don't want it to transfer to your house. Other things you'll be looking at on your roof, if you have that pine tree and it's dropping needles on top of your roof, that's where your young offspring is good because they can survive the fall a lot better than your seniors. They can clean off the roof and clean off the gutters and get those uh, ember catching uh, places away. We also have a WUI, the Wildland Urban Interface training program, and you guys can reach out to that gentleman and I'll give you his contact. He's just like me, he's a specialist in Wildland Urban Interface. And we have programs for removing extra shrubs like our variety that grow next to your house. They're great green plants year round and they burn really well when the ember hits them. And we have a program where we'll come in and cut them down, shred them, and turn them into compost. So those are some of the easy hints to your question. Thank you. And then the only, the only other thing I have too is, you know, again, looking at garages, you know, right? What, what, you know, what, what things, maybe should be removed or should be looked at as, you know, possible hazards or potential uh, fuel for fire in one's garage. Yeah, you've got two major concerns with garages. Um, garages are great stores of stuff. And you know you have a healthy senior that's got that garage painted, everything's organized and where it needs to be. When you come across that senior where they have a collection of items that may not be necessary, they may have 20 to 30 years of paint collected, or chemicals, other than that, they're, those you can refer to the 80 County Landfill, and there's a hazardous materials drop-off site. There's no charge for dropping stuff off. 
typically they're open Friday and Saturday, and you can encourage your seniors to go up there, uh, get rid of the stuff, and um, that way they can clean that hazard out of their, their garage. Other things you may come across is hoarding issues, where a person is suffering from typically depression, and they just can't process enough to get that stuff out of their, their house. Starting in the garage is actually the best place to work with them because they usually drive with the car and building trust with that effect of moving the items away from the car so it eases them and it helps them start that process of recovery and removing hazards from the garage. Thank you very much, Captain Roy. This is really um, a great reminder and great resources for us and our clients.